Okay, here we are. Hey, so good to see you. Great to see you. You're located in such a beautiful part of the country and the landscape surrounding your studio is a great source of inspiration for you. How do you translate the environment into your paintings? I would say I am actively involved with maybe every inch of this land out here. So um, I think I bring it in kind of body and soul. It's the experience of it. It's also uh, the feel of it. My work tends to be, um, it tends to come from lived experience and the more direct, the better. So to have a studio that is placed under, you know, big sky and meadows that, um, you know, that blow in the wind and the migratory birds that come by, that kind of stuff is exactly what creates the energy for me to be able to make the work. I am most, the sky is really big and there's lots and lots of visible space. That's sort of my ballast. And so to be able to authentically give that to the work, um, I think that's what expanded it. And then ultimately, I love to stand before a very large painting, a painting that's a little larger than I am. And so you can be, you can, you can be in it. I love that experience. And I do, I do play with a 12 by 12 inch, you know, on a very dramatically smaller scale. Uh, works kind of as studies and also just to keep my mind agile so that you have to shrink and, and get larger and anything that kind of messes you up a little bit is good for you. We also have a question about your painting process. So we're wondering how spontaneous it is or is it premeditated or how do you develop your work? So we have one of your beautiful works behind us right now. Yeah, it is not premeditated. Uh, it is, which doesn't mean it's spontaneous it's not just kind of arms and legs flying but um you know as we were talking about the impact of experience on the work if i can take that experience into uh color and space and mark with the least amount of translations that's when the painting is the most alive and uh, so if i try to think about like we had a prairie fire. If I try to think about me bringing that prairie fire in and paint prairie fire paintings, then it's it doesn't work the same as just have the impression, the memory, sense, the feel, and it come straight from that in the most authentic way as possible. Your pieces seem really action-based, how you start them on the floor. And I saw sometimes you use your hands to paint instead of a brush and how did that, that, how did that process become part of your painting process to the, the action of interacting with the canvas and the materials and all of that? Yeah. Well, I used to live in a very small house and I, my studio was the floor of the living room and the work just kept getting bigger. I got less furniture. I kept spreading the canvases out, but there wasn't really any way to do a formal process where you stretch a painting and put it on an easel. So I was working on the floor, I was working outside to pour the kind of color field atmosphere that that is sort of the ground for all of the work. And then I would pin it up on walls and go in and, and mix. So it, this, I think the size of the canvas, I think uh, dragging it in and outside, I would use a hose on it. It sort of just developed out of enthusiasm. And um, I just kept having this really strong desire to keep expanding it. So, and it was just, you know, like sticks, pins, stick it up on hay bales, uh, you know, just it, really uh, very energetic. You're right. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of motion in your pieces, in your work. So we can kind of see that your enthusiasm mm -hmm. and your movement and your expanse. So, I mean, we, we love the work. We just, because it, the color palettes, the, the different little lines and everybody sees something different. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I think that's, what's, what's so great about 
looking at your work and enjoying your work. So we're very happy to have you at the gallery. Mm -hmm. How do you decide on what materials you use? And we're wondering if you are experimenting with any new materials as well. I am, and that was all kind of of a piece. So in that sort of fervor and energetic movement that goes on, I will I will use what's available. Uh, like the poured acrylic started out because it, it was it was more of a, like what can I get to quickly? What can I make happen now so that I can start having this fun of uh, responding to just responding to what's happening. Uh, so in the beginning, there were, um, I mean, th throughout the process, it's been whatever's handy. If there's a, an eraser, if there's a stick, if there's a yardstick, if there's a broom, uh, then that those are all uh, oh, extremely fun to introduce something new like that, which mixes it up a little bit and then need to rethink in a fresh way and kind of be in a mode of discovery. Um, and he, oftentimes when I would get it kind of slowed down and be not as interested in what I was creating, I will pull in necessary, I mean, uh, very, um, intentionally, I will buy some medium that I don't, I don't know what it, how it works. And so that allows me to experiment with it and play with it a little bit. Um, and the house paint um house paint is just such a wonderful matte flat um unpretentious especially just the neutrals that i've picked up such an unpretentious ground but i really love to work with that and that changes the surface of the canvas enough that it changes the way that the marks go down so i love to flip back and forth between those two modalities well, thank you so much. We we so appreciate your time. Great to talk to it's you. It's really nice. It's really nice to catch up and mm -hmm. we appreciate it. <laughs> Take care. Thanks for the chance. All right. Thanks. Bye, Jane. Thanks. Bye-bye, y'all. Bye.